Hello boys and girls, hello my sailors, this is your captain Harsh Maheshwari and I am an alumnus of NIT Varanthi. For all of those who are coming here for the very first time, I welcome you all. Today I am going to take up Coordination Chemistry, a beautiful chapter, very very important chapter. Every time a question comes from, uh, from this particular chapter in JE, so it's a very very important chapter. Let's learn this chapter with a smile on our face, let's go ahead. All right. Boys and girls, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please make sure you subscribe to it and also hit the bell icon so you will be notified when your favorite teacher is live. So do make sure you hit the bell icon as well. And similarly, boys and girls, I have a very, very, very good news to tell you that, you know, this entire, whatever, if you are weak at a particular topic or in a particular uh, section, you can buy a micro course of it. For example, you are not good at uh, ionic equilibrium in chemistry so you can buy that particular topic and how much you have to pay for it only one rupee so make sure you go for it same for physics same for maths same for chemistry right if all the micro courses are available and you can avail them by just paying one rupee so make sure you take the advantage you know you take some you buy some micro courses for yourself all right moving on boys and girls i'll not waste any time i am going to discuss about coordination chemistry or coordination compounds and today's sec today's class is very very important because i'll build the foundation for this entire chapter so pay full attention and let's proceed all right so before i start i must know some salts some, some simple salts and how a simple salt is different or what kind of salts are different from the complex salt or the co coordination compounds which we have to study so what is a salt basically Salt is something which you will dissolve in water. Simple salt, if I talk about, it will give you cation as well as anion. Best example is NaCl. When you dissolve NaCl in water, what you are going to get, you are going to get Na plus and Cl minus. Now here comes an interesting part. When you have a mixed salt, what is a mixed salt, beta? Mixed salt is something when you dis which you dissolve, you will get more than one type of cation or anion. As per your uh, example, for example, check this out, CaOCl2, it is going to give you one calcium, that is a cation, and two anions. Similarly, if I take NaH2PO4-, minor, PO4, I'm so sorry, it is going to give you one cation, two cation, and only one anion. So, are you getting my point? So, these are the salts which you when dissolve in water can give you more than one type of cation or anion. Those are called as mixed salt. All right, moving on. Similarly, we have acidic salt, quite interesting actually, uh, from the name itself is clear. These salts will act as an acid when they will react with base. So when they will react with base, they are going to furnish H+, that's the difference. If base is not there, for example, this example you can see, NaH2PO4, I can also call it as a mixed salt, provided I am not reacting it with anything. When I start reacting it with, uh, with something, what will happen beta? Uh, with, what is that something? If I start reacting it with base, it will start acting as a as a as a acidic salt. What will happen? It will start furnishing H plus ion. Similarly, what is a basic salt? What is a basic salt? Very simple, which can act as a base, which can act as a base when you will react it with an acid, right? And example is in front of you. All right, moving on. This is the most important part. What is a double salt? But a double salt is something which you get when you mix two different salt solutions. Suppose I have taken salt A, salt B, and I have taken solutions of it, salt A solution, salt B solution, and I have mixed it. What I will do, the resulting solution, what I have received, what I have got, whatever the solvent is there, I will evaporate. I will evaporate all the solvent. Whatever the residue is left, that is called as double salt. That is called as double salt. Now, this residue, the interesting part, so double salt is something which you are getting, acha. Whatever the salts you are mixing now, you are mixing it in a definite proportion. You are mixing it in a definite proportion and evaporating all the solvent. The residue is called as double salt. Beautiful double salt. Some examples are Mohar salt and potash alum. Very important examples. The learned JE and some small uh, your engineering exams definitely ask this. What is the formula of Mohar salt? What is the formula of potash alum? Very simple. In your, it's in also in your NCRT. Very, very important. And formula can also be used. Let me just give you one more point. Mohr salt is FeSO4. Here, Fe oxidation state is plus 2. When you react it with KMnO4, it will be converted into plus 3. Fe plus 3 will become. Valency factor is 1. The change in number of electron is 1, right? Boys and girls, this kind of information, why I had given, this question was connected in redox. 
you know, uh, your uh, redox titrations, KMnO4 versus Mohor salt they have done. If you had no idea about Mohor salt, the formula and the oxidation number, what will be the chain? You can't solve that. So that's why it's very important to learn these formulas, right? I can't focus enough. I have given much emphasis here. So make sure, make sure you learn them. All right. Now, what is the property of this double salt? Pay full attention. When you take this double salt, dissolve it in water beta, it will be ionized 100%. It will start giving you all the ions which are there. Take care, for example, uh, when I dissolve potash alum, this one, let me just write it. This is potash alum. This is called as potash alum. When you dissolve potash alum in water, it is going to liberate or it is going to furnish all the ions. So these double salt can be broken down into simpler ions. Same for Mohr salt. It will break down into simpler ions. 100 percent it will ionize. It will ionize. It will ionize 100 percent. I hope the point is clear. It will ionize 100 percent. All right. Moving on. Now the main thing which we were waiting for. Coordination or coordination salt or complex salt. Okay. Both the names are correct. How do I get to know? these salts are given to us very simple trick you will see a square bracket in your compound right square bracket itself is an indicator that it is a coordination salt or complex salt what is happening why it is called as coordination called uh, coordination salt or complex salt because there is a coordination bond you see this iron this is called a central atom whatever is inside uh, whatever is present inside the square bracket i am telling it now this one is called as central atom. This one is called as ligand. Don't worry, I'll talk about these two terms in detail in 5-10 minutes. Right? The species which is inside the square bracket, which is a metal, will be called as, you know, uh, your central atom. And what is a ligand? The thing which is giving electron pairs or donating electrons to the central atom is called as ligand. These are electron pair donors. They are electron pair donors. So they are having a coordinate bond. What kind of bond beta? They are having a coordinate bond among each other. That's why the name of the salt is complex salt or coordination salt or coordination compounds. Entire, entire chapter is nothing but coordination compound because there is a coordination bond. There is a coordinate bond between the central atom and the ligand. I hope the point is clear. Okay? All right. These points I have written, you can check them out. Now, important thing. So if I have a complex salt or a complex coordination salt your call when i dissolve it in water beta this whatever species which is there in the square bracket whatever is there in the square bracket whatever is there in the square bracket would not be ionized it would not be ionized can't ionize can't ionize i hope you are getting the point so it will not be giving you the simpler ion simpler ion cannot be produced here Previously, when you dissolve, this, this is a very important differentiation. That what is the difference between double salt and your complex salt? Why the heck we are studying them? This is the reason that double salt will ionize into simpler ions, but your coordination complex will never ionize into simpler ion at normal temperature. So some may argue, sir, what if I start heating them? Of course, beta. It will start dissociating if you will start heating it up. But at normal conditions, at normal temperature, it will not ionize or it will not break into simpler ions. So you will say, sir, complex ions or complex salts or coordination salts will not ionize into simpler ion when dissolved in water. Whereas double salt, for example, Mohor salt can be ionized into simpler ions. I hope the point is clear. This is a very important point. Moving on. Yehi same cheese batai mene beta. This is a minus four charge. Correct. Same thing I have told uh, for the previous compound. This is the question. This was the compound. Simpler ion. This thing will not be broken down into simpler ion. Right? At this given temperature. If you start heating it up, of course, it can be broken down. Bahut badia. Achha, one more thing. One kind of question can come. They will give you this complex. This K4, Fe, C, N6. They will ask you, how many ions are produced in the solution? You will say, sir. Total 5 ions are produced. This kind of question we will also take up in next session, tomorrow's session. So don't worry. Okay? Basically, you are you are seeing there are total 5 ions are formed. Okay? And what is the relation here? I will connect this particular point in the next class. So stay tuned. Okay? Make sure you attend my next lecture. That is on, uh, that is on Thursday. Alright. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, next. Some definitions. Very, very important. 
very very important all right so make sure pay full attention pay full attention all right bachcha all right so let's discuss these definitions first one is coordination sphere acha after reading all these definitions i can guarantee you you will feel much confident you will feel much happy about this chapter theek okay? hai let's let's go ahead so coordination sphere what is coordination sphere uh, this square bracket you see beta uh, what is presence in, in inside the square bracket that is central atom and a ligand that is called and how they are linked they are linked by a coordinate bond so uh, the square bracket consists of whatever inside is there in the uh, in the in the uh, in a square bracket that is your central atom and ligand that entire entity is called as coordination sphere so it contains the central atom and the ligand and they are connected by the help of coordinate bond all right theek okay? hai so that is called as coordination sphere what is central atom central atom is something which is accepting electron pairs from a ligand so if you are accepting electrons from something beta you must have some room in in it or basically that particular metal should have some room in it right so basically we choose such kind of metal which has which has vacant d orbital we choose such kind of metals which have vacant d orbitals in it for example transition metals are the best example because they can contain vacant d orbital as they contain vacant d orbital so as a result they can accept the electron pairs given by the ligand ligand is nothing but electron pair donor electron pair donor so it is going to give the electron pair to the central atom and central atom is going to keep it in its vacant d orbital right and this donation of electron will happen by the help of coordinate bond beautiful you, you are getting it you are getting it next definition a uh, next definition ligand acha did i see something here it should be second beta please allow me and the next second one is ligand ligand what is ligand beta ligand is something which can donate electron pair to the central atom and of course it must have electron pair on it so lewis bases are actually good ligands lewis bases are actually good ligands example ammonia ammonia has a lone pair on it right so it can give this electron pair to the central atom all ligands are not lewis base all lewis base are ligands but all ligands are not lewis base for example benzene benzene does not have any electron pair on it but still it, it acts as a ligand so ye hame learn nahi karna hai ki sir agar lewis base hoga tabhi ligand hoga no 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 there are many examples in our literature which we shall see in the coming lecture that they can also function as a ligand all right what is outer sphere it is the ionizable part fourth definition what is an outer sphere it is the ionizable part you guys know square bracket ke andar jo bhi hota hai whatever is present inside the square bracket cannot be ionized so the part which is not a part of this a square bracket will be ionized so it is the ionizable part of these complex and whatever is out of the square bracket whatever is present outside the square bracket would be acting as the ionizable part so it will give you 4k plus here okay, what you are going to get you are going to get 4k plus along with that you will get yahan pe aapka square bracket rahega as it is it will not be ionized beta and there would be minus 4 if i ask you total how many ions you will say total Five ions are produced. All right, moving on. Next up, next up, coordination number. Very easy. How many sigma bonds are attached, or how many sigma bonds are formed with the central atom? Best example, NiCO four. NiCO. Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me correct it. And मजा आ रहा है. I'm liking the class. I hope you guys are enjoying it. NiCO four. ठीक है एन आई सी ओ फोर सो यू कैन नोटिस हाउ मेनी सिग्मा बॉन्ड्स आर फॉर्म वन टू थ्री एंड फोर सो यू विल से कॉर्डिनेशन नंबर इज फोर ठीक है इट इज इट इज डिफाइंड फॉर अ सेंट्रल आइटम एंड हाउ मेनी सिग्मा बॉन्ड्स आर अटैच टू अ सेंट्रल आइटम वुड बी कॉल्ड एज कॉर्डिनेशन नंबर मोर एग्जाम्पल्स लेट मी गिव यू फॉर एग्जाम्पल ए जी क्या आई जस्ट मिस कंट्रोल जेड इफ आई डू अ मिस्टेक आई कैन ईजीली गेट बैक एंड करेक्टेड All right, so check this out. There are some soft stuff. C n minus is also a ligand, right? Here coordination number would be how much? Two, 
right? Uh, so this one is this. How many? What is the number? Two, right? Two sigma bonds are bound, formed, right? So yeah. Similarly, you can also have. You can give me the answer for this one. So tell me. I am just making here for your convenience. How many bonds you see? How many bonds you see with Cu? How many sigma bonds? How many sigma bonds? We see six sigma bonds. So my homework to you guys, which you will give you an answer in the comment box. What is the coordination number of chromium here? What is the coordination number of chromium? Please do answer it in the uh, in the uh, you know comment box. All right, moving on. Now, oxidation number important definition. It is an imaginary charge. It is an imaginary charge that developed on the central atom if all the ligands are removed. Acha, for answering this, you must know that ligands are of three types: neutral ligand, uh, cationic ligand, and anionic ligand. Cationic ligand means they must have positive charge on it. Anionic ligand means they must have negative charge on it. And now this is this is a sort of an information which you must remember, which you must learn. Okay. So Cl minus Br minus I minus Cn minus here these all are having minus one charge on it. They are anionic ligand. Ammonia, H2O, CO. This is called as carbonyl. This is called as uh, aqua. Water is called as aqua. Amine is A double M I N E. We'll talk all about it in in tomorrow's class as well. So these are neutral ligand. Learn them. Learn them. And nitros nitrosonium ion NO plus. It is having plus one charge on it. It is a positive ligand. For example, check this out. If I will ask you, what is the oxidation number of nickel in this complex? You will say X. Same method. Carbon monoxide or carbonyl group is nothing but zero. Just now I told. Overall charge is zero. So here X is equal to zero. So nickel will have zero oxidation number. What about this iron X plus chlorine is how much beta minus six? On the square bracket, on the square bracket, what is the charge? Do you see beta minus four? So X will come as how much? Plus two. I hope you are understanding. So what is the value of X? X is plus two. It means iron is having plus two charge on it. That is the oxidation number. Take it just like the normal uh, method which you have learned in eleventh class. All right. Generally, generally means there can be exceptions. Uh, when you have higher oxidation number, coordination number increases. For example, plus three will go up to six coordination number. Means there will be six sigma bonds. Surrounding the central atom, right? There will be six ligands. Higher the oxidation number, higher is the, uh, you know, coordination number. Generally, this is the trend. For plus one, there is a range from, you know, coordination number can be two, coordination number can be four. This is the way. All right. But I use the word generally. There are some exceptions. I have humbly listed out. For example, chromium in plus one state in some compounds has been shown, or has been found to give you coordination number of six. In, similarly, aluminium plus three has also given plus uh, six, right? So there are some exceptions. So make sure you also remember here. Generally, here this is there is a very important word called as generally. There are exceptions, right? All right, but this is a humble trend that higher the oxidation number generally will get higher, uh, you know, higher coordination number. All right. Now coming to density, very very important. जो भी पढ़ाऊँगा आज important बहुत है ये बेटा. And I will take up a question that has appeared in J. And I have, when I was writing my J, that question came up. Okay, that question came up, and luckily I knew the answer. Yes. All right. So let's have this, uh, you know, density. Let's understand this density. Basically, it is equal to the number of sigma bonds formed by the ligand with the central atom. How many sigma bond your central, your ligand is going to make with the central atom, right? Acha. Now pay attention. If I say one sigma bond. How many electron pairs I am talking about? I am talking about one electron pair, right? More dentate ligands are those which will form a sigma bond, one single bond. It means how many pair of electron they are going to give? It is going to give one pair of electron, right? It is going to give one pair of electron to the central atom. Examples are in front of you. Learn them with me. Cl minus, I minus, OH minus, CO, water, ammonia, all are. Mono dentate ligand. They are going to give a pair of electron to the central atom. They are going to form one sigma bond. What is di dentate ligand? Di dentate, from the name itself, is clear. Is going to make two sigma bonds, right? And two sigma bonds means how many pair? You are going to give two electron pair to the central atom. They are going to give two electron pair to the central atom. 
I hope it is clear. Example is oxalate ethylene diamine. This is very, very important. I'll show you the structure as well. If it is not mentioned, yeah, it is not mentioned. So let me write, write it down. This is the structure of ethylene diamine. Ethylene means two carbon. Ethylene means two carbon. Diamine amine group is present two times, right? This is called as ethylene diamine. With a nitrogen, there are two donor nitrogen atom. Two donor nitrogen atom. Okay? Each nitrogen is going to give a pair of electrons. Since there are two nitrogens, it will give you how much? Two times, right? And similarly, oxalate. I am pretty sure many of you know oxalate. I am pretty sure many of you know oxalate. Here, these O minus are going to give you the electron pair. I hope it is clear. Okay? So, there are two sigma, basically two sigma bonds are formed. So hence, density would be two. It is because it is forming two sigma bonds. How many electron pair it will give? It will give total two electron pair. And total, how many electrons? Four electrons it will give. Here, how many electrons it will give? Previous one, two electrons. Total from one ligand, how many electrons are going? Beta, four electrons are going. Or two electron pair is given by the ligand. Okay. <coughs> it's by the same ligand, right? All right, moving on. Tridentate, I think now is clear. Tridentate ligand, what is tridentate ligand beta? It is going to give you three sigma bonds. It is going to give you what? It is going to give you three pair of electrons. Or you can say six electrons. I hope it is clear. What I have done? Simple trick to remember. I have just, this is a substituent. This is a substituent or this is a, a some tweak we have done in your ethylene diamine. But I have done NH2, one of the hydrogen of the NH2, I have replaced it by CH2, CH2, NH2. This is the way you can remember. Tetradentate means it is going to form four sigma bonds. It is going to give eight electrons. See, the same ligand is capable of giving eight electrons to the center atom. How amazing is that? And check this out, same. Logic is same. Two times you will do the process. I hope it is clear. Then next one is pentadentate. It is going to give you five sigma bonds. Basically, five sigma bond means 10 electrons are given by the same ligand. Okay, pentadentate, pentadentate. But what is most important to us is hexadentate. It is called as EDTA. As it is mentioned here, EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetate ion. Ethylene diamine tetraacetate ion. Previous one was what? Ethylene diamine triacetate ion, right? Correct? Because it was penta. Here it is now how much? 4. So ethylene diamine, ethylene diamine tetraacetate ion. It is a very important example. This question came in J. The structure of it. Let me teach you the structure. Let me teach you a trick to remember the structure. Pay full attention. I am going to make it easier for you. Kaafi difficult lag Let's make it easier. Peter, just now I told what is ethylene diamine? This is ethylene diamine, right? Replace both the hydrogen, replace both the hydrogen with acetate ion. Check this out. How amazing is that? So CH2, CH2, and CH2, CO minus, CH2, CO minus. This is the simplest trick I can give you here. CH2, CO minus, CH2, CO minus. Beta. How many donor atoms you see? Check this out. All oxygen with a negative charge. There are four donor atoms. There are four. There are four oxygen donor atom. And there are beta. There are two nitrogen donor atom. Correct. Check this out. So total, how many electron pairs? would be given by one molecule of EDTA. Beta, it will be giving you how many? Six, tha, they look, six, and you get 12 electrons would be given. It will form six sigma bonds. It will form six sigma bonds. I hope it is clear. Kya amazing concept, hai, right? Achha. One more thing I'd like to tell you here. One more thing I'd like to tell you here, Beta. Let me erase some few part of your just few things here. One more thing I'd like to tell you here, beta. Uh, check this out. 
बेटा ईडीटी है ना ईडीटी है इस एक्चुअली एन एनाइनिक ली डी के इट विल फॉर्म ईडीटी है माइनस फोर इट इस एन एनाइनिक ली के दिस क्वेश्चन आल्सो केम इन एन एग्जाम ठीक है आई डोंट रिकॉल व्हिच एग्जाम एक्जेक्टली एन नीट का सवाल था या फिर जेई का but it is there I just, it just came up in my mind so i am discussing it eta is an anionic ligand and what is the charge on it minus 4 charge on it ye yaad kar lo kuch the point that i am discussing are very very important it is an anionic ligand it is an anionic ligand theek hai ye anionic ligand hai ispe negative pole charge uh, negative basically it is anionic it has minus 4 char charge on it and the most important part here one more thing uh, beta one more thing a very important thing that you know basically we have many categories of ligand there are three categories of ligand anionic cationic neutral edta belongs to anionic ligand edta belongs to anionic ligand all right now this thing i'll explain here again check this out so cationic ligand they overall are, overall they have positive charge on it for example no plus right example na no plus anionic ligand they have negative charge on it Right, these are some examples. Make sure you learn them. Neutral, bade sare water, ammonia, carbonyl, right? Carbonyl. These are some neutral ligands. All right. Okay, beta. Flexidentate ligand. Kafi amazing hai. Flexidentate ligand. As per the requirement, it can change it, its denticity. Basically, for example, just now I told EDTA can form six sigma bonds, can donate twelve electrons. But as per your its 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 demand, you know, as per the question or compound demand, it can play with its density. It can also form four sigma bonds. Okay, as per your question, it will say no need to mug up, but only remember the density or this flexidentate ligand that there are some ligands which are you know polydentate ligands. Whenever a ligand can form more than one sigma bond, or then we'll count you know uh, two or more than two, uh, we can always call that ligand as polydentate ligand. One it will form, you will say monodentate ligand. Correct. So these all are polydentate ligands, but when they will try to change the number of bonds, uh, the, how they are connecting with the central atom, then you will say that this flexidentate ligand. For example, EDTA can flex between four and six, even five as well. Sulfate can form, uh, you know, it can form one sigma bond. It can also form two sigma bonds. So how awesome is that? We just learn them, nothing else. Do not be afraid. Just learn the definition and learn that EDTA can flex between uh, four, five, six. Just that's it. Nothing extra is asked from it. Okay, do not worry that you have to learn the examples. No, kabi kabi aisa sawal aaya hi nahi hai. It has never been asked. Okay, all right. What is ambidentate ligand? Ambidentate ligand from the same ligand. Basically, you have two donor atoms. Yahan pe do donor atoms hai. Uh, for example, CN minus. I can have carbon attacking uh, to the central atom or carbon donating a pair of electron to the central atom. Nitrogen can also do the same job. NO2 minus nitrogen can go, and similarly, oxygen can also uh, give the electron pair to the central atom. How amazing is that? So, these are called as ambidentate ligands, in which the ligand has two donor atoms, two different donor atoms which are present in the same system. Okay? So, I have given out some examples you can learn. Okay? And I'll discuss in more detail. For example, now, how would you get to know? Ki which one is uh, acting where which one is used up where for example let me give you one thing here one detailed version for example a complex is there if i am writing the name like this nc so i'll understand nitrogen is uh, you know attacking it is ligating or it is acting as a donor atom if i write like this cn so i will say okay carbon is the donor atom of this particular ligand okay i hope the point is loud and clear to all of you. Okay, beta? Bahut badiya. Aage badunga. Chilation. Very, very important. Basically, whenever a polydentate ligand is there and it is forming a link, whenever polydentate ligands are attaching itself with the central atom, forming sigma bonds, polydentate ligands can also form rings. And, you know, whenever more rings are formed in a system, higher is the stability. Higher is the stability. So, the polydentate ligand can attack on the central atom forming links uh, rings and this ring is going to increase the stability for example i have given an example this en means ethylene diamine ethylene diamine is this beta check this out let me write this check this out what amazing example this is your metal here also isko na h ko piche karte hai aise galat hi karta hai ye kya hua 
वन सेकेंड बेटा हाँ जी इसको पीछे करते हैं वन सेकेंड हाँ पे अटेंशन Check this out. Aren't you getting two five-member drinks? Aren't you getting two five-member drinks? And more the more the rings, higher will be the stability. So polyentate. This is a, there is a question on it. Check this out. There is a question on it. How amazing is that? Which one is more stable out of these, and why? Fe. This is the structure for FeCl6 three minus. This is the structure, right? This is the structure. And here, on the other hand, you are going to get ethylene diamine. We will show like this. It is a didentate ligand. Two two bonds I am showing. How many bonds I am showing? Beta, I am showing two bonds. Okay, check this out. So it it indicates that there are two bonds. Okay, it indicates that there are two bonds. Itself. ऐसे करके दिखा दो इट विल शो की देर इज टू बॉन्ड देर आर टू बॉन्ड्स अच्छा अभी जस्ट नो आई टोल यू जस्ट नो आई टोल यू इथली नया माइंड इज दिस जस्ट नो आई टोल यू एफ देर इज अ मेटल इट इज इट इज गोइंग टू फॉर्म अ फाइव मेंबर ड्रिंक जस्ट नो आई टोल फाइव मेंबर ड्रिंक Let me just clarify and make it just a little bit better for the mass understanding. Basically, I'm trying to tell you a bit. And nitrogen is the donor atom. Okay. Five member ring is formed. So if I will make here, if I go for this particular compound. If I go for this particular compound, there will be three five-membered ring, and higher the ring number, more will be the stability. So five-membered rings are there, more is the stability. Okay. So answer is which one is more stable? This one. First or second? Answer is second is more stable than first. This is your stability order. Okay, beta. I hope it is clear. आगे बढ़ूँगा. Last but not the least, we are coming at the end, almost at the end. Check this out. Check this out. Coordination polyhedral. Basically, it means what is the shape of the complex if the coordination number is given. We'll study this for us in our syllabus. Coordination number four and coordination number six is there, right? The coordination complexes we are going to learn in in our particular chapter. Basically, we'll have coordination number six and coordination number uh, four. By chance, it is two. So you say shape is linear. For example, I have just now shown an example, AgCN2. When I when I started, when I opened with this session, I have given this example, AgCN minus. Okay, here coordination number is two. Here coordination number is two. All right. Similarly, three trigonal planar. Many examples. Okay, not important for us. What is important for us is case number four. There are two categories: tetrahedral and square planar. There will be four sigma bond. Coordination number four itself means what? Itself means that there will be ligand, four ligands. It will be uh, attacking on the central atom and forming four sigma bonds. Uh, basically, eight electrons would be given to the central atom, and it can come in two uh, shapes or two uh, geometry. One is tetrahedral, one is square planar. We are going to study them in our syllabus. Okay. Syllabus uh, similarly five, not so important to be very honest. This is the category you can look at it. What is important for us is coordination number six. It is going to give you octahedral, right? This, the hybridization is sp3 d2 or d2 sp3 is also there. Well, we shall see. It, the shape is octahedral. This is very very important for us. We shall discuss about it in our coming classes. ठीक है? All right. So that's it for me today, beta. Uh, please make sure you check out some amazing micro courses which are there. If you are weak at a particular topic in a particular subject, we are there to help you. We'll make sure that you understand. And you know uh, the prices are so low that it is just of one rupee. ठीक है? So buy as many as you can. If you are weak at a particular topic, kill it. ठीक है? To skill that topic. If you are weak at uh, uh, you know in uh, thermodynamics, buy it. Buy it. ठीक है? One rupee it will take. All right. 
and boys and girls if you are coming here for the very first time you are not aware or, or you are my old students you are not able to find my playlist it is down in the description click it entire whatever the things i have taught so far will be visible will be available okay all right and yes join telegram please do make sure you join telegram we are giving all the information join our channel on telegram that is vedantu ji join it join it there on on, on telegram link to it is in the description similarly if you have loved the session today beta if you have loved it please make sure you like it share it and subscribe to our channel thank you so much that's it for me today see you next time bye bye